Welcome back everyone to our gameplay series of Farming Simulator 19. So we're back here on the valley map and I wanted to show you guys a little bit of what I've done uh, since our last video to try to get uh, our farm started, get some things in place. Uh, I have done a few different things. Let's start by pulling up uh, the map here. Oh wow, that is not going to be helpful at all. That is much too small. So we'll actually pull up the bigger map. And so in the very first video, we got started by purchasing fields 9, 10, and 11. And of course, that comes with all of this area around field 11 as well. We also placed a few buildings. We've got our uh, cow shed over here, as well as uh, a couple of other things that I've added since then. So here in just a moment, I wanna hop into our tractor, our Massey Ferguson, and we're gonna just take a trip around and I'll show you guys sort of what I've learned about the map in my first time working the field. So you look over here to the right, and I've already not only planted grass on all three of these fields, but I've also uh, cut the grass, tethered it, and then uh, finally collected the hay for one, uh, for our first time, so that we can get an idea of uh, just how things are going to go, how the AI respond to the fields, and if there are any issues that I found. And here next to our uh, cow enclosure, you can see that I've placed down a few buildings uh, to get us started. We've got our water tank there, and then uh, next to that is the fuel tank. And then finally, a hayloft, which is located about as close to uh, the road as we're allowed uh, to get. One of the things I have encountered are a few errors in different places about not owning a certain plot of land, uh, which is understandable as you get closer to the road. That part I understand, but uh, we're going to see that here when we get over into the divide between fields 9 and 10, uh, because I actually went and uh, took the plow and combined those two fields at least as much as I could. Also, you notice that I've put down a couple of modded lights uh, here in this area just to test them out and see exactly how well they work uh, and if they provide enough light for me to, to reasonably work through the night. Uh, hopefully they will, uh, but so far, you know, they did okay for the first night. Luckily for me, I didn't have to do any work uh, on the first night, so we'll have to wait a little bit longer uh, to be able to tell. All right, as we come over to fields 9 and 10, uh, now I have not combined fields 9, 10, and 11 by uh, plowing this area between the fields that we're on right now. But one thing I did do is, you'll notice that I have uh, shrunk the size of field 9 here at the top portion of of the field. I've actually done some landscaping and, and got rid of the field. And the reason I did that was simply to allow more room for the AI to turn around uh, without having to run into issues such as running out into the road or into trees primarily. Because they run into trees, that's just more involvement that I'm going to have to have with them, getting them off, stuck off the trees and, and so on. So, so far, so good. I was able to uh, to take away a little bit of the field, which of course is going to hurt our yields, but uh, overall I think it really helped uh, the field as far as what we were able to accomplish. So as we come around to the area between fields 9 and 10, this is where I ran into an issue. So I was able to plow this area and for the most part it worked out okay. What I found were there were a few areas uh, on the edges of the fields as well as a few right in the center uh, that caused some issues. So here you can see the grass that has not been cut between the fields and that's because um, once I left the AI to their own devices and let them pathfind on their own, what they ended up doing was for the most part they split the field in half. So they still worked it as field 9 and field 10. Uh, which is not what I intended, but looks like probably what I'm going to have to do uh, because, in, in fact, you're going to see a couple of these spots as we drive across. Here's one where I was just not allowed 
uh, to do anything. I could plow there, but that was it. Uh, it wouldn't let me uh, do any seed work there. Uh, and of course, you don't see any grass growing there. The same thing happens as we get over into this area. Again, it was just showing that I did not own this land. So I'm assuming that is just sort of a little bit of a glitch in between the two fields and not a huge deal to me. If we have to work them uh, as two separate fields, it's not the end of the world. And then long term, I'll have to decide if I'm going to uh, leave these fields divided or if I'm going to try to combine them. I will probably leave them uh, separated simply because of some other issues it might bring into play with me not owning a certain uh, piece of land according to the map and, and, and so on. But then I came around on the bottom side of the fields and I had to do a similar thing that I did on the top side. I had to shorten the fields and give them uh, some room uh, for the AI and the equipment to work and get turned around without having to run into any trees or out into uh, the road. Because long term, I would like to be able to leave on uh, the traffic if I can. I've got it turned off for now while I figure all this out. But I would like to leave it on because I like the feeling of a, a little bit of a living world that you get from that. So I shortened these fields uh, out of necessity and then put uh, a roadway around the sides. Of course, long term, I'm planning on putting uh, more buildings over in this area. But for right now, I wanted to save the remainder of our money because we need to purchase some cows. You'll notice in our cow enclosure, we don't have any cows right now. And that is because I wanted to get as much done uh, that I felt like needed to be done, uh, as well as get that first harvest out of the way. And let's actually hop out and run over to, to the area where we're going to purchase uh, the cow. So as we open up this particular uh, enclosure, we're going to see that we got $247,000 that we can spend. Here it is, our balance at the very top. And that's not going to get us as many cows as we want, but we're going to have to sort of uh, creep our way up on that. And I'm perfectly fine with that. We've purchased uh, quite a bit of land. We've gotten uh, the basic buildings down. Uh, I mean, we don't really need a, a normal silo right now because all we're harvesting is grass. So what I'm going to do is actually come down to the black and white cows. And I'm going to purchase uh, as many of them as I feasibly think that we can get by with here at the beginning while leaving enough money uh, in the bank account to hopefully last us until we can get a steady income stream going. All right, so I have done all the clicking required, and boy, do I really wish that they would give us an option to choose how many we would like to purchase uh, rather than having to individually click for each one. So I've chosen to spend uh, right at about $200,000. That'll leave us uh, close to forty-five or so thousand dollars remaining in the bank account, and hopefully that'll last us for a few days uh, until we can really get a source of income up and going. Now we're not going to have a huge source of income for quite a while, but we don't really need it on this map. Uh, we're going to be expanding as we move forward for the next few videos, but it's really not a huge deal for me. This is one of those smaller maps where you can just focus on doing the things that you enjoy and not have to worry about such a huge map and the possibility of 20 or 30 or more fields that are uh, contained on it. So $202,500 total. Let's go ahead and confirm that. And if we come back in and take a look at our animal enclosure, you can see that that is enough to purchase us 75 cows. So that's a nice amount to get started with, nowhere near the, the amount that we're going to want long term. But now with that in mind, we're going to need to first move our Massey Ferguson out of the way. Because we're going to need to get some food and water in here for these guys in order to start the milk production, as well as, of course, slurry and manure over the long term. So we'll get started by coming over to the hayloft where I've left our loading wagon. And we'll get hitched up to this thing. Now, I've already got him ready to start loading, so we'll let him go ahead and start filling. Now, one thing we're not going to have for a little while is straw. So we'll lose a little bit of uh, productivity, but that's okay. 
we'll be perfectly fine. Oh, looks like we're missing the loading wagon just a little bit there. Thankfully, in this game, it doesn't matter, at least not without certain mods that will uh, enable things like this to happen in, in that, that grass or hay actually to be spilled on the ground. But we're going to see just how much of this hay uh, we can fit in there. One of the things I've resisted doing in, uh, in Farming Sim 19 is creating spreadsheets to see exactly how much food and or water that each of the animals needs on a daily basis because it takes away some of the fun for me. Um, a lot of times when I'm doing some of the behind the scenes work, I will actually run those numbers, but this in this year's edition of the game, I have decided not to do that if I can possibly get by with it. Just so that it keeps things a little bit more fresh for me. I don't attempt to remember exactly how much uh, grass or hay any of the animals need on an individual basis per day. All right, so you can see as this empties, uh, the trough is nowhere near full as we're about to run out of hay. So let's actually pull back up and you can see, yeah, that is not going to be a lot. And we've got enough for uh, one more full load, but then not much beyond that. So we didn't get the full uh, harvest on the fields this time that we would normally expect to get. And that's because the fields simply, they were not fertilized. All right, let's see if we can do a little bit better here. And keep as much of this grass actually flowing. All right, so 67,608. And this time we're not spilling any on the ground visually. So we've got enough left for this one last full tank. But then beyond that, uh, we're not going to have a whole lot of extra in here. But of course, remember, as we take a look at uh, this screen, you're no longer looking as in times past with a six or a seven day trough. You're looking at much more than that. I believe it's actually 10 now, if I remember correctly. So this small of uh, an area would normally mean trouble for you, mean that you've only got somewhere around uh, one day worth of food in there. But now, not so much. You've got a, a couple of days worth of food at least. So we'll ultimately find out just how many cows we can reasonably support. Uh, looks like I've got some tree trimming to do over here. I'll be trying to get rid of at least probably one or two of these trees to make it a little bit easier to get around the corner, as well as making the visibility a little bit better getting around the corner. As much as I love the first person view, in all of the racing games, I, I, I can't even fathom wanting to, to run a racing game without being in the cockpit view. But uh, in Farming Sim, I just don't like it. And a lot of it has to do with the wheel rotation. Uh, it might be a little bit better if I could get rid of that to where the wheel doesn't turn. But that gets on my nerves the way it, uh, it responds to my keyboard inputs. Now, if I had a reliable wheel and pedal set right now then that might be a little bit different story using those but for right now it is certainly not an ideal situation all right so let's go ahead and get that last eleven thousand of hay and then we'll move on we'll put a little bit of water in there for these guys and we'll let them get started producing some milk because we're going to need that milk long term uh, to sustain our farm the question is is it going to be enough right now? Or are we going to have to uh, take some drastic measures to try to stay afloat until we can have enough cows to produce enough milk? All right, there we go. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to get rid of at least a couple of trees, if not all four of those. And there's one of those visual oddities where it shows that we have no hay remaining in the loading wagon. Uh, but you notice that the back of the loading wagon has not come back down. It is still, the belt is still moving and it's still attempting to push the hay out, even though there is no hay left in the back. It's simply a visual oddity right now. A little glitch in the system. All right, so we'll go ahead and drop this guy off and we will pick up our 
our water slash uh, milk tanker and this is going to be a very tight fit so this looks like I may have to take the long way around and who knows we might even get even get into some crop destruction on our field a little bit there but we're working in a fairly confined space and I didn't want to take up any more room than I really needed to uh, but it looks like I probably could have used with a little bit more wiggle room here on the sides uh, to deal with actually getting this tractor trailer rig in and out now back behind us uh, right across the street as you see those people walking by that's actually one of the sell points uh, that we have and then the BGA is just a little bit further up the street from that so uh, now the interesting thing about the BGA if we go ahead and pull this up uh, the BGA you actually just like on the default map you have to purchase the BGA in order to use it and you can see here the square around it and sure enough two hundred sixty four thousand dollars is what it would require to purchase this area which admittedly I'm not a big fan of this uh, I, I see their point you know you shouldn't be able to use uh, the the silos here without owning the land that's sort of the theme of farming sim 19 you can't use the land for anything you know you can't mow grass on it you can't cut trees on it you know any of that stuff without owning it so I understand that portion of it but you also can't sell at it either and unless uh, you or at least somebody already owns it all right so let's go ahead and we're actually going to stop there because I'm not sure how much water these guys are going to need and I don't want to keep a whole lot of water in our our milk tank okay, there we go let's drop off some water and again we'll just see how much now the cows use quite a bit of water uh, each day very thirsty animals so we'll see how much water this gives them oh yeah we're going to be perfectly fine here yeah so as we come to the end of this particular load you can see we are nowhere near being full so I'll go back and I will actually fill that up uh, as I mentioned before right now we don't have any straw but one of the options we have if we want to go ahead and get some straw is we can actually purchase some bales from the store and then bring those over and, and try to take it from there if we want to do that but then that would require some additional equipment and so on so I will probably leave the straw out for right now and we'll just simply deal with not having that and we'll just simply go with water and hay and when we come back next time I'll let you guys know about how much milk we can expect with 75 cows and this productivity level how much milk we can expect to get on a daily basis which will give us an idea of how much money we should be able to bring in on a daily basis here at the beginning so that's going to do it for today thank you very much for joining me and stay tuned as we will continue our farming sim 19 gameplay